Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining March's um, Open Alex webinar. We had another one that was canceled on search queries. And don't worry, we've got something very exciting coming for that. So stay tuned on that. We're just adding a new feature that's going to make that much better. And we didn't want to um, have to do another follow-up webinar immediately after. Um, but today, we're going to be talking to a couple of organizations that are using Open Alex to provide value add services. And in our last webinar, we had an academic institution that had built derivative products off Open Alex. And today we've got two companies that are doing that. Um, so you're not gonna hear me talking much longer. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to them. But just as a reminder for those who haven't been here before, or, um, or, or sorry, a reminder for those who have been here before and to let people who haven't been here before know that we're gonna do a recording of the presentation component. I'll ask that the um, the speakers provide their, their information if you wanna follow up with them afterwards, but we will have a Q and A immediately after this that won't be recorded. So please feel free to put your questions directly in the Q&A box, even during the presentation, and we'll, we'll get to them afterwards. Um, but with that, the two presentations we'll have today are from Ahmet Mungin. From, um, he's the founder and chief technical officer for Inciris, and he's going to be talking today about PIRI, an academic discovery service. Really excited to hear more about that. And then Martin Jaegerhorn, who's the VP business development for Kronos Hope. Um, first, we're going to have Ahmet speak, and then we're going to go over to Martin, um, but feel free to put questions in the chat, and we'll have a joint Q&A at the end. So with that, I'll turn it right over to you, Ahmet. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Peer Discovery Services presentation in the webinar series organized by OpenAlex. We are very happy to be here. I'm Ahmet Mingan, uh, Kyle already said. I'm a uh, founder and technical manager uh, at the peer discovery services. Today, uh, I will tell you about the peer discovery services and OpenAlex collaborations. In fact, uh, the question we are all trying to solve uh, is successful the processing of big data. Uh, in academic publications, data is now too large to be corrected manually, so we need some solutions. Academic data science now into real a big data process. We, I mean OpenAlex and us, can both try to create a useful product and contribute to researchers' uh, research life and their academic life uh, with big data. I, I want to talk uh, a little about uh, my product, uh, I mean PIRI. PIRI is an institutional specific discovery services focus on search, search on academic articles. We index it, uh, many academic databases and uh, make uh, search in uh, the, the, these uh, items in the single screen with a search keyword. Uh, users, I mean the uh, university, academicians, students, uh, research assistant and all part of the researchers in university uh, use PILI for finding related uh, academic articles with their keywords uh, include printed books from their libraries, uh, online subscriptions, and open access databases. PIRI is an institution of discovery services, and only institution can subscribe PIRI, and these uh, users from institution can use PIRI. Uh, dozens of universities in Turkey use PIRI as a primary source, primary discovery services, uh, I can prepare some screenshot for um, uh, in my product uh, to uh, explain my uh, product easily. You can see our simple search screen. Uh, users can write a keyword and uh, make some uh, field, uh, then uh, can make easily uh, search in the single screen. Uh, here is a uh, search result uh, screen. Uh, you can see the general information about paper, uh, which uh, can be provided by publishers and OpenAlex. Uh, in, that, in the now, we use OpenAlex data to show uh, some uh, metadata and information uh, to users. For example, the citation number came from OpenAlex, and this citation number uh, provide users about the importance of the paper. So users can 
uh, decide what uh, paper is important than others and what paper uh, should I use in my uh, article when I write literature review. So some information from this ecran actually came from OpenLX and OpenLX helped to us to give more information about the paper. You can see uh, some filters here. Uh, these filters also uh, contributed by OpenLX and publishers. Uh, we collect a lot of uh, data from a lot of resources and uh, combine all of them to our users. Uh, topic, you know, OpenLX provide a very good and uh, accurately uh, topic for us, uh, for all papers which include OpenLX. So we can use these data for the, our filters uh, more uh, efficiently. Uh, and also, here is a citation network. Uh, this screen show users uh, the uh, reference part of the paper and citation of a paper. So we use also OpenLX actively for this screen. Uh, when, a, you, when our users select a paper and want to uh, see uh, all uh, relationship uh, in the citation part, citation relationship, uh, users can uh, users can see the list of the papers. For example, I see it, select a paper. Uh, you can see the point. This point mean that uh, this paper is giving uh, citation or take citation from the uh, this paper. So you can see the uh, connection in the reference area uh, with OpenLX data. And also, uh, we want to. Uh, explore, we want to show different keywords. Uh, when a user writes a keyword, uh, for example, I write a data mining keyword, uh, system uh, show different keywords which is related with data mining uh, keyword. We also uh, take the advantages of the OpenLX data from the creating this uh, graph uh, because OpenLX give also keyword information of uh, articles uh, to us, so we can create keyword graph uh, from this data uh, accurately and successfully. Uh, I uh, took a look at uh, all our integration from OpenLX to our system, and we I can uh, show I can see that four different type of the data came from OpenLX to our system for our users. One of them is a article details, paper details. Uh, other of them authors, third and journals, and at last but not this institutional uh, information came from uh, OpenLX uh, are used in our system uh, actively. And I will show uh, the, the some examples of the OpenLX and our systems data using together in the screen. Uh, for example, PLIS main data sources publishers. Uh, we use publisher data because we uh, use our uh, service to university uh, about their active subtractions. But despite this, <coughs> with OpenLX, we can present the data from publisher with much more richer metadata. For example, this metadata, <coughs> citation number, <coughs> related works and language can from OpenLX. And also, you can see the detail of the papers. You can uh, see some keywords and the information came from both OpenLX and publishers. We are getting together and uh, show our users for giving more and more information about uh, the results, about papers. Before OpenLX, uh, for us, uh, it was impossible to find a author's academic background, academic information. But now we can find uh, a lot of information about the authors and give this information to our users. So. People use our uh, people use our customer use this information to find good and good uh, academicians experts for a, a topic. 
and find their papers easily. So this is very important for us. You, you can also see a screen from the OpenLX for author information. When we over a, a user's name, you can see easily the uh, user's uh, affiliation data. So this information also came from OpenLX and enriches our metadata to users uh, can see more detailed information about the user or uh, paper. Uh, I already said that the primary source for journals is publishers for us, but uh, thanks to information provided by OpenLX, these all information, listed information, came uh, from OpenLX, and we show this information to our users, our uh, customers. Uh, Except for OpenLX, we probably cannot find or cannot get somewhere from this information and to show our users. So this is very important to show a journal's detail about the, uh, a journal detail to our users. And also you can see a information page from my from Piri, uh, how I show OpenLX and use these data to my customers. Uh, you know the institutions that our uh, last uh, item, last part to use OpenLX, but uh, we uh, think that this is very important. Wearing an institutional publication and sorting them by citation card uh, was not possible except for the uh, commercial index before OpenLX. But today, OpenLX provides all these informations more accurately, more successfully, more fastly to us, and we can show this information to our users, to our institutional uh, or officers or the, uh, the some managers of our users, our officers, without any price because of OpenLX. <laughs> And this is my screen, which I show the institutional uh, papers to uh, our customers. You can see some filters. All these filters come from uh, OpenLX, except for two, two of them. So OpenLX can help to organize uh, also institutional paper to my customers. Our customers easily can see a list and uh, Print all this information uh, easily, successfully, and uh, updated information, uh, most updated information. Let me conclude my all uh, slides. OpenLX successfully combine and analyze academic data from different types, for different types, and PA uh, discovery service use this data to enriching the data offering to our users. Uh, moreover, we are able to provide detailed academic data uh, uh, needed during the user's research step. And I believe that uh, these data from OpenLX uh, help both us and our researchers to uh, take the correct information more uh, precisely, more accurately. Uh, OpenLX is continuously updated, and this is the most important also things. I mean, I can uh, know that OpenLX give me most updated information and I can show the, these information to my users. Uh, and this is a, a part of the story, actually, the up-to-date up story for me. We, know, uh, we love dealing with academic papers. We will continue dealing with academic papers with OpenLX and their services. Uh, that is all I want to uh, explain. That's all I want to show you. Uh, thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Ahmed. That was great. And I actually have a few questions when we get to q and I'm excited to, to dive into. Thank you. Um, next up, we have Martin Jaegerhorn. And Ahmed, I think you need to stop sharing so that Martin is able to share his screen. That was the fastest transition I've ever seen. That was great. Okay, over to you, Martin. Right. Well, thank you very much for the introduction, Kyle. And um, very nice to meet you all. Uh, good morning and afternoon, a little bit depending on where you are in the world. Uh, so this very brief presentation um, will give you an overview of Chronosub for you that are not so familiar with Chronosub. 
and particularly how um, we work with Open Alex um, with the overall aim to put your open access management on autopilot. Um, so um, I'll give you just this high level overview of Chronosub as such, or as a company and the platform, outlining uh, the role of Open Alex. And if time permits, we'll try to have a very, very brief live demo so you can see how these things come together, uh, hopefully in a nice way. Uh, and then as Kyle said, we'll, we'll go over to more of a Q&A part. Yeah, so first of all, well, Kronos Hub is, I think, fair to say that we are the leading uh, platform in the world today for automating the publishing workflow and managing all types of open access. Um, and a disclaimer on that is that um, we do process a lot of articles that are not open access. It's just that a lot of the main challenges that we're solving when we work with institutions um, relate to open access, whether that's green, gold, or hybrid. Um, and we try, try to work in a quite holistic way. Um, Kyle asked me before this meeting started why we're called Kronos Hub and Hub very much because we try to connect the different stakeholders and taking a collaborative approach to solve the common challenges we have in the research ecosystem. So OpenAlex is one out of many important technology partners with the same aim of connecting these stakeholders. And regardless, if we're now working with a publisher, an institution, consortium, or research funder, we are on the same mission um, in terms of facilitating for the authors, unburdening them from administration so they can focus their time on research. At the same time as we can ensure that um, administration and, uh, and management at these different organizations have all the data in a well-structured way that they can no, do all kinds of reports and reuse this data downstream in an automated way. Uh, in order to achieve this, we combine uh, increasingly uh, artificial intelligence uh, to scan manuscripts and open access fee invoices with a lot of integrations. Um, and so if we look at the platform, we try to do this also in as a holistic way as possible, meaning that we try to support the entire publishing journey. And this means that the Chronosub platform starts already uh, before an author submits a manuscript to a publisher. And the whole way through managing APCs, then monitoring all kinds of open access agreements and automating full text deposits into repositories, CRIS systems and RIM systems. Um, and um, when we look at all these different modules, so um, some institutions only use one of them, others use the full platform. Uh, but OpenAlex actually plays a role for all of them in one way or the other. Yeah. So when we look at the starting point here, being a uh, where we have a journal guide with about uh, 46,000 journals, well, some of the metadata is coming from OpenAlex, and then we combine this with a lot of other sources so we can give the researchers peace of mind when they look up a journal that they uh, see, is this covered by an open access agreement, for example, and I or do I have to pay an APC with or without a discount? Uh, is it compliant with my funder's policies? Without the need to jump around on journal web pages, uh, uh, funders policy pages, or journal checker tools, or um, Excel lists with all these this agreement information and libguides, right? All aggregated in one place. It's easy um, and transparent to the authors um, uh, to assess each individual journal. Um, when we look at the process around APC management, well, that's really about providing one place to go to for institutions. So they have an overview on one single approval dashboard of all their APC funding requests automatically evaluated to their own individual specific eligibility criteria. Some of these criteria are important or are important are possible <laughs> to answer um, in a better way by reusing data uh, from OpenAlex. So this is primarily, again, journal metadata. Uh, and I'll show you a few examples later so you'll, you'll get a more concrete view of what that means. Um, once articles um, have been approved, we do the payments on their behalf directly to publishers in some cases. In other cases, we just trigger notification to uh, the finance team that then does the payment. Um, and this means that the article later becomes published 
and its first one is published, it appears in OpenAlex. And this also means that the data that we do not have at hand here upon article acceptance, we can automatically um, uh, add to those records by reusing data from OpenAlex and a few other connected online sources. Um, so most obviously things like the publishing date, which is of course not available at this stage or the direct link to the full text. In some cases, we do also bring in um, affiliate, sorry, authors and their affiliations. And this is more when we work with research outputs collection and automating that for funders um, as an example. So um, we can, of course, maybe have a look at that as well. Um, but this means that by reusing data from the integrations, and uh, at this stage, we scan manuscripts and APC invoices, we transform all this unstructured data into structured data with persistent identifiers for all the related entities around an article, whether that's the authors, um, their affiliations, or related to open access agreements, uh, and of course, from the article to the journal, from the journal to the publisher. Um, and this means that we can also automate these integrations downstream. We have persistent identifiers and try to keep the data as fair as possible. Well, then we don't need manual validation steps and no need to manually validate or manually retype any information. Um, so we save time uh, also in this respect from, from for the researchers. So hopefully that gives everyone sort of a an, an fair idea of what the Chronosub platform is about and the contribution from OpenAlex seen to reusing um, primarily journal data at, the, at, the, at these early stages and then article metadata um, with some relations once the article has been published. Um, and um, I should maybe comment this arrow as well <laughs> so you, you don't wonder what that means. So um, as we work with a lot of publishers, um, we do have a lot of very well-structured data that we could reuse and provide open outlets with. It's grayed out because we have not yet implemented this step, but it's something that we've sort of touched upon in our um, discussions around our collaboration. All right, so that said, if we just move over uh, here to have a, a quick view, just so you have a visual of what, what all of this really means, right? So this is an example of the journal guide, which is one of the four modules. Um, this is for a Finnish university, Tampere. Uh, and you see that there are these 46,000 journals indexed here. So some of the information uh, is coming from OpenAlex. Uh, so you see here we have uh, title, ISSN numbers, uh, we don't use the topics or subject areas. Um, that was interesting that you do that at PIRI or for PIRI. So we'll maybe investigate that going forward. Um, and then um, we had descriptions and license information, um, the uh, open access type, whether this is gold or hybrid and so forth. And so seen to this information, primarily information about the licenses and open access types um, is what we use. Um, and in some cases, we actually uh, only find this journal in OpenAlex and not in some of the other sources. Uh, and then we combine this with information from all kinds of other places. Uh, so the subject areas come from Scopus, for example, for the moment. Uh, we see that there are different kinds of journal lists. So we do collect data from Scopus and DOEJ. Um, this is a journal ranking specifically in Finland. So we have an integration with the JUFO portal. Um, and then we have information uh, or facets here enabling the authors to filter on all kinds of, uh, of other aspects like publishers or licenses uh, or open access types or, or embargo periods and the like. Um, so if we filter on Wiley here, we see that it's now limited to uh, a few thousand journals. Um, and we can also see that this is now uh, giving us as a researcher um, direct the message that the institution wants to give us seen to um, agreement conditions. So this information about structured data on the agreements um, is coming directly from Pronsa uh, or through the publishers we work with, uh, but it's a self-service for, for institutions to really use this as an instrument to bring all these things together. And um, if we want to, we can now look at all kinds of funders. Um, some are part of Coalition S, so we can reuse data from the Plan S journal checker tool 
In other cases, uh, not, right? So uh, then we have our own direct evaluation. Just to illustrate how we try to bring all of this in an aggregated way together. So as an author, we don't need to worry about paying the APC because it's covered by an agreement. We don't need to worry about um, uh, compliance or non-compliance issues with our funder because we can see here that it's it's quite okay. Right. Um, and then uh, some other use cases to guide them in the direction of publishing in journals, indexed in certain uh, databases and so forth, of course. Right, so hopefully that gave everyone a little bit of flavor and idea what the, the journal guide can do uh, for an institution. You may come across this when you go to some publishers uh, like ECS, IOP, RSC, and others. They have their own journal guide. The only difference is it's limited to own their own journals. Um, so if we now turn uh, the coin and look at, um, or turn the coin, we'll continue the journey. Um, if you want to submit now an APC funding request, well, then the platform offers a dynamic widget that institutions can include on any web pages, and this is freely configurable. So this is when you uh, we validate them based on their email address. They can select a journal where some of the journal data comes from Open Alex, um, and they can indicate their uh, license and upload a file. To illustrate how this works, I've logged in so we can see a little bit more and live what's actually happening. Um, so we see the same kind of form, but now with title and type and abstract and all kinds of things in here. So it's a rather empty form. We just see that we're associated with this as John Smith. Um, so if we now upload a uh, manuscript, the platform can scan this manuscript and identify a few different things. So now we see that the title is um, identified. We have an abstract. And we have specifically now matched this up with the authors on this paper and their affiliations. Um, and um, this uh, means that we uh, don't have to fill in as much manually, of course. Right? Um, but some of this information is, of course, not available once we have this um, sorry, on article acceptance stage. So once this is published, um, I'll illustrate this by just adding the DOI in here. We see that now we add the publishing date from Open Alex and we add the direct link to the full text, just as examples. But to illustrate that further, we see that the authors actually now are also updated and their affiliations, which also comes in from Open Alex. Um, this information came from the paper, so I can scroll as far down, but and in a similar way, we can also now include uh, support for research data sets, and then we use ORCID IDs to look them up. And so we're trying to really combine all of these in as an automated way as possible. Uh, and that's why uh, it's all these capabilities are reused in, from various angles. Right? So when you go to a publisher, there are more and more publishers using this service when they submit a manuscript. They upload it, the manuscript. It's scanned in the same way as we just had a look at. Um, and then the form is just looking a little bit different, but you can uh, directly get all this information uh, together as well. Or when we look at funders, well, we automatically import their grants. We look up their grants against um, Open Alex, Dimensions, and a few other databases and directly relate them to the outputs, as you can see here. So this is without any manual work from anyone, actually. Uh, and and if you want to, you can still search in Open Alex and other sources, and relate the items that you find uh, in the sort of semi semi well semi manual way, semi automated way, uh, or you have suggested work products, um, and these are based on uh, matches with ORCID IDs or um, but not with the grant ID. So just to illustrate that from a few different angles, um, you know. Um, but if you have any more questions, then you're, of course, uh, more than welcome to contact me directly or um, bombard us with any kinds of questions in the Q&A. All right. Thank you, Martin. That was great. And thank you, Ahmet, again, for both of your presentations. It's really important for, for our users to understand how companies are using OpenAlex. And I did want to also say this is a really important part of sustainability for OpenAlex as well. Is, um, is is having corporate partners who are using our data for different services. 
So with that, um, I'm glad both of you put your contact information in the presentation. People watching it afterwards can pause and, and view that, but I'll go ahead and stop the, um, the recording and we'll move into Q&A. Thank you both again.